To experience insightful contemporary art in Ocean County, visit any one of its many galleries and exhibits, or the nearest branch of the Ocean County Library. Throughout August 2021, the Barnegat Branch features the art of Marty Mayo, an individual whose depth and imagination presents itself on canvas and also on guitar. Take us back to the beginning. What was it that triggered the artistic streak in you? When did you know that this is what you wanted to do? Well, my dad was a graphic designer. He used to commute in and out of Manhattan, and he would show me samples of other artists' work. And just, I, I was just always drawing, always drawing, always creating. And he was a very positive influence on, on my creation process. Mm -hmm. What sort of media did he work in? He was basically a graphic designer, but I remember one specific time where he was drawing all my brothers and sisters with uh, pastels. And I remember that night vividly because it was one of the few times that I saw him actually drawing because graphic design, he didn't really draw, he organized things or designed things on the page. But I distinctly remember that time he drew everybody in the house with the pastels, and I still have that drawing framed in my house today. One thing I noticed about your work is that you're a people watcher. Definitely. You yeah. study you study human nature and you study the human condition, and that's one thing that that struck me about so many of your pieces is that it's not simply. A, a rendition of an individual, but what's going on in and around that individual. And I, the more I looked at the work, the more I found detail after detail around the subject and even in the subject. You could have just drawn an individual, but you filled it in with all these details. Mm. And I, I, think, I think that grew out of me drawing every day, the, the practice of just drawing, whether I'm in a doctor's office, wait in the waiting room, I'm always sketching somebody in there, um, trying not to make it too obvious where they might catch me drawing them, I, then I'll look away. But um, that, was, that was definitely, um, I went to Parsons School of Design and I studied illustration there. And one of my professors was uh, very clear about drawing every day and making that a part of your practice. And I've tried to keep to that to this day. Um, so it's not only the figure I'm drawing, but I'm looking at the environment to kind of tell a story with whatever objects may be surrounding that figure, um, rather than just focusing on the figure itself. And I think that's how it it blossomed out of just that practice of drawing every day, which I think is so important. And all of those details seem to be structured into, into a very subtle sort of social commentary. I noticed a, a number of your pieces that I believe you did during, during the pandemic, during the height of the pandemic. Uh, and it, it kind of said things about the condition in which we were living. Uh, under isolation and the regrouping of people. I, I remember distinctly one that wasn't a specific COVID piece, but it was a man perched on an, uh, an examination table holding a couple of tablets in his hand. Uh, okay. I think that was actually done prior um, many years ago for the, the Washington Post, I did that illustration. It had to do with uh, pharmaceutical drugs, but um, yeah, it does a lot, of, a lot of the drawings I've done and the subject matter could definitely relate to the pandemic. Now that was a really telling piece. And I, I, uh, the thing that grabbed me was not just that he was sitting on an examination table holding a, a pair of pills, but he was contemplating them. He was pensive. What other newspapers have you been published in? Um, 
a long time ago, but the New York Times, um, the Boston Globe, the um, Interview Magazine, which was Andy, Andy Warhol. Warhol. Yeah. yeah. So I was excited about those. Um, they're the progressive. There were many newspapers and magazines that I was published in right after school and into the 1990s. When I, when I look at your work, uh, I see a lot. I'll give you my impressions of influences, but you tell me what they really are, okay? Because when I'm looking at your work, uh, I see uh, a little bit of Magritte. I see a little bit of Jules Pfeiffer. I see a little bit of Sergio Aragonis. Uh, I see a little bit of Burke Breathe, Breathed, uh, Gahan Wilson. I see all of these people. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's my experience. So tell me yours. Who, who influenced you in terms of creating what you do? Um, Alan E. Kober was a great influence on me. He was an illustrator in the 70s. And that was going back to my dad, bringing home samples of other artists' work. And he made a huge impact on me. Uh, Robert Andrew Parker was one of my professors at Parsons. Um, I, and then people like Picasso and uh, Magritte, which you mentioned, Salvador Dali. Mm -hmm. So all the surrealist painters are a big influence on what I do. I do see a lot of surrealism in there and a little touch of cubism now, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. um, so outside of furtively looking at people in the waiting room and sketching them. Where, where do you get your inspiration? What it, it comes from everywhere. I, even when I'm on the line at the bank, I'll look at the person next to me in the car next to me and I'll have my sketchbook with me and I'll do a little quick drawing while I'm stopped driving. And uh, it's, it's become that much of an obsession where most of my time, I try to, I try to use my hands and create something. Mm -hmm. Marty, how do you categorize it? What, what if if it had to fall into a category, uh, what would it be? If I when I came out of school, I wanted to be an illustrator. I thought that was the most and the best thing I could do: be an illustrator. But I had a professor in college, and he knew I was getting some work published in the New York Times. And <clears throat> he called me aside and said, you know, maybe you want to think about being a film director. Or I guess he wanted to push me a little further than being an illustrator. Um, I'd like to think my work now is leaning more towards fine art and I try to think of myself as more of a an artist rather than an illustrator. I can see that in the composition you you have a, a, a very unusual uh, mixture a singular mixture of the sharpness of a pen line and the the softness of almost a watercolor. So what media do you, do you employ for the most part? I like using materials that are inexpensive. I use house paint. I use acrylic ink. Uh, it's mixed media, definitely, that I use collage. I try to use a lot of different materials because I feel that using a certain material will bring upon a certain idea. And if I switch media, it'll sometimes spark a new direction. Mm -hmm. Do you do much work in collage? Um, I go through phases where I do. Right now I'm not, but my brother is a artist too, and he works in collage a tremendous amount. My father did a lot of collage work and assemblage work, uh, reminiscent of Joseph Cornell's work. So 
those influences are always in the back of my mind. Mm -hmm. When you want to stretch, when you want to push your boundaries out a little bit and, and move into, expand your, your media horizons, what, what media do you experiment with? Um, I think oil paint I stay away from because of the, the expense and the, the uh, materials, the fumes and all. But um, that was always challenging for me, the oil paint. I did a lot of that in college. But um, maybe I'll get back to that someday. Mm -hmm. I know my sons recently said, why don't we try oil paint? And I said, uh, I try not to be negative, but, <laughs> but it's not my favorite. We talked a little bit about you know sketching people and getting getting ideas from that. Do you rely solely on sketches? Do you use models? Do you use your imagination to to come up with some of them? A lot of the paintings I do, it's strictly imagination. Sometimes I'll do a drawing of a person in a park or wherever, and I'll incorporate that into a painting by collaging it in or repainting it, redrawing it. But mostly the paintings come from imagination. Mm -hmm. But I think the drawing, the daily drawing, um, informs the paintings. And daily living informs the paintings. Uh, there are there are numerous messages that you're sending in so many of your pieces, uh, which tell us, it actually tells us a little bit about what's going on inside you and your observations of the world, which I think great art always does. Uh, and do, do you find that your perspective changes from time to time? Do you look at older pieces and go, well, I don't think that way anymore? Uh, have, have you evolved that way, and has, has your work evolved with you? Hmm. I, I think, um, yeah, it's, it's constantly evolving, constantly changing. And I do, I do look back on things and think, wow, where did that come from? Or I noticed my eyesight was a lot better <laughs> starting out because I worked very small to fit into magazines and now I favor a broader larger canvas mm -hmm. to work in. Tell us about your most recent one. I think one of the more recent ones it's here in in the Barnegat Library is um, it's something based on Halloween and it has I used spray paint I used house paint acrylic ink I think there's some collage going on in there and um, I'm been more and more intrigued with um, the holiday, Halloween. So that's a big influence in there. And I don't know how it all relates, Halloween and the pandemic, and there's a lot of different things going on. I just kind of put it all into a blender and, and press start and Whatever comes out, comes out. Maybe it's fear. Yeah. I think that's a lot of it. I, I, I am a very... Halloween is scary yeah. when you're a kid. True. The pandemic is scary when you're an adult. Well, that's interesting, yeah. It's a lot of subconscious and, and anxiety that I channel my anxieties into the painting and drawing. Is it, is it kind of therapy for you when you do oh, that? Oh, Im immense immensely. I, I'd be lost without it. Um, your work uh, has been not only on exhibit here, but you're a, a fairly frequent, uh, from what I understand, you're, f you're a frequent uh, uh, visitor to the Pine Shores Art Association. Yes, I go for drawing classes there quite a bit. Um, I haven't been doing it in the summer because I've been doing a lot of drawing at different locations, caricatures. I, I draw caricatures and um, I'm busy with that at Nardi's on Long Beach Island and, and uh, Lorita Winery on the weekends. So I'm always 
peddling my caricature business. You do really good. Ca- There's a caricature that of, of Leonardo DiCaprio among your work. That was a good one. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, they're all good, but thanks. that one really stuck out. Thank you. Yeah. The, was that from a photo? Yes. Yeah. Um, my wife's a huge fan of Johnny Depp, so I have a lot of him, too. Mm, she's the one who's more in tune with who's a movie star and who's on television, so I'll ask her, who should I try a caricature of? And she'll give me different ideas. Uh, from what I know of caricature, it's kind of homing in on key elements of an appearance and expanding them or shaping them so that it defines the individual. How do you know what you're looking for? I, I try not to go crazy with exaggeration and border on the grotesque or I try to make it kind of somewhat flattering to, to people, especially when I'm doing them on locations and when I'm doing parties. I try to make them so that people don't get offended. <laughs> Just <laughs> That's my... not me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, yes, it is. Uh, it's just my version of you. So there's a little bit of a little bit of psychology involved in that too. I mean, you have to be able to read somebody, and you have to be able to interpret that individual, and then present it back to them, and take into account that sensitivity. Mm-hmm. There's a lot going on in there. It sure is. The brain is always working. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You didn't get a degree in psychology, too, did you? I, maybe I should have. <laughs> Another thing that um, you may, if you're a Marty Mayo fan, you already know, but everyone else who is just coming into this, um, you may be familiar with Marty and the Martians, and this is Marty. <laughs> uh, and that, that's a whole other story into itself. Uh, when you're not painting, you're strapping on a guitar. How's that experience for you? I like it because I get to interact with other individuals and the, the art is more of an isolating practice. But the band, I get to see other people, interact with the audience. It's, we're a fun band, a party band, I guess you could say. And we do a lot of cover songs. And um, we have a female vocalist, Desiree, guitar, bass, drums, and keyboards. And it's, it gets me out of the house. And it, <laughs> and it gets me in front of people and interacting with others. So let's plug everybody in the band. Who's, who, who is in the band? Mike Leonard is the lead guitarist. He used to perform in a band called Bad Attitude for, out of Rawway, New Jersey. Um, Mark Lingholm is play, bass guitar. I've been playing with him since high school. Uh, Tom Torhan on keyboards lives in Pennsylvania and commutes from Pennsylvania to gigs in New Jersey. Um, his cousin, Mike Kaminsky, plays drums, and Desiree sings lead vocal, and I sing vocals, too. Mm-hmm. Um, when a band gets up and tunes up and starts, starts rocking out, people just take it for granted uh, that, oh, it's always been this way. But there's a process to even taking a cover song, much less an original one, and coalescing that among all of those components, all of those people, and getting everybody basically into the same driving lane so that it comes out the way it has to come out. Um, so for me, the fascination is in your, your solitude in creating art and your ability to plug into being part of a group that is on a mission to reach a common goal. And that requires a lot of cooperation. It's not always easy. It's the band is like a dysfunctional family. (laughs) Uh, We're dealing with other, five other personalities and let's work on this while somebody else doesn't want to. So it's it's run like a democracy. 
I used to be more of a dictator when I was starting out, but I find this works better. Everybody has a voice and everybody gets heard. We try to let everybody have a point of view that's expressed. And you know, there are points for and against in both instances. You know, when you're running the band, you kind of take on all of the responsibility and then you, by, by extension, are shaping that band and expecting people to conform to that. In a democracy, you're gonna have more arguments and you're gonna have more, uh, more discussion, but you are ultimately going to, you're paying respect to everybody for their individual talent and you have a, essentially the same product at the end, just reaching it by a different route. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So you have one big happy family, right? <laughs> <laughs> it depends on the night. It depends on the performance, how it goes. But we do try to have fun, and I think people that come to see us forget about life for a while. And well, you're, as you said, you're a party band. Yep, yeah, it's, it's a wonderful feeling to know that the music is lifting somebody's spirits. Mm -hmm. You got some gigs coming up? Yeah, we're playing at the Shillelagh Club in Belmar this Friday coming up. We play regularly at the Old Causeway in Manhawken and Nardi's on Long Beach Island. So we, we have a few gigs coming up, yeah. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's great. Uh, and after the summer's over, you continue that? Yeah, yeah. Hopefully things will keep keep opening up for us. We, I'm going to get back to art a second. We talked about who influenced you. We talked about uh, the way you have evolved. There's a whole generation that's coming up that's evolving too, uh, including, I believe, your sons. Yep, I have twin boys that are studying at University of the Arts in Philly, and they are doing really exciting work with pen and ink and watercolor and I took my sons on a just a trip to a local store that was closed down it's been closed down for months and we sat and we painted the the storefront in our sketchbooks and ever since then they've just exploded with going to different locations and drawing and painting it's and I'm very proud of them. It's, a, it's really exciting to see that. Now, we talked about your father's influence on you. Do you see any of your influence moving into their generation? Yeah, I see a, a lot of influences. And they're inspiring me. I mean, I see their work and I'm like, wow, I better get going here. I better, I got a lot of catching up to do. <laughs> they're, they're very good. They're keeping you young? Yeah. <laughs> and that's a job that gets harder as the years go by, isn't it? Yeah, I feel it. I feel, <laughs> feel the aches and pains when I wake up in the morning. Oh, you're not there yet, Sonny. <laughs> Got a ways to go. I'll tell you about it. Uh, but it's a real pleasure. Uh, you're a fun guy to talk to, and, and you're very informative. This has been a lesson. Thank you so much, Tom. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. You're, you're a good man, Marty Mayo. Thank you. You can see all this at martymayo.com, and you can find out about Marty and the Martians. And I mean, he's, it's, it's an explosive web page. When you see it, you'll understand. But if you're in the area, go to the Barringer Branch throughout the month of August, and you'll see Marty Mayo's work on the walls. It's, it's exceptional. Thanks for stopping by. And find out more about our podcasts on Anchor FM, Breaker Audio, Google Podcasts, Pocket Casts, Radio Public, and Spotify. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for hundreds of informative, creative, and fun videos. And follow the Ocean County Library on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, and Snapchat. For the Ocean County Library, I'm Tom Longelli. Thanks for stopping by.